All right, and here's a quick uh, review of Lesson 61 as well. Uh, this one is on a few parts of stats, uh, the first part being single variable analysis, and here's some things I wrote down to shorten it a little bit or make it a little easier. I do suggest reading this and looking at some of the graphs because it is uh, a little bit more lengthy. Anyways, um, the single variable is going to look at the variation of a single measurement. That's the idea of single variable, um, just the variation on that. So we're going to talk about... Um, like again statistics like mean and standard deviation. The mean, uh, this is called the mu, that's the symbol they use for mean uh, shorthand in math and stats uh, and that is again this is the mean or average of the measurements. So you just take the sum of all the, of the data and divide by the number of things that you added together and that's how you find the mean. The standard deviation is an important measurement in statistics and that is represented by a sigma so it kind of looks like a theta, but the O connects at the top, and then it's just a straight line off to the side as opposed to that loop. Um, but anyways, it's a uh, it measures the variance from the mean. Okay, so the smaller the standard deviation, that means all the data is very close to the mean. Okay, it's very close together um, when you're studying that data. A large standard deviation means the data is more spread out, not as consistent. Okay, this would be a little more consistent uh, in terms of, you know, whatever single item that you're studying. So standard deviation, the way you find it, it's the square root of the average of the squares of the deviations. Okay, we know what square root is. That we know what the average is. So we're taking the average of the squares of the deviations or differences between uh, again the mean and the each data set okay so we're taking the square root of the average so uh, an example would be the measured distances are 12 7 15 and 10 find mu which means average the mean and find the standard deviation so 12 7 15 and 10 the average or mean we just add those four items together and divide by four so those all add up to 44, divide by 4, the mean is 11. The standard deviation, again, is the distance of each one of those numbers from 11. So to find the standard deviation, so I'm just writing my own short, shorthand here, find distance from the mean. So from 12 to 11, because, you know, the 11 is the mean, so from 12 to 11, that's one unit apart. From 7 to 11, that's four units apart. From 15 to 11, also 4 units apart, and from 11 to 10, 1 unit apart. So the 4 differences, okay, how far they are from the mean, are 1, 4, 4, and 1. So again, using the definition for standard deviation, we're going to take the square root, you see a big square root, of the average, again, average is add them all up and divide by however many things you added. So we're taking the average of the squares, of the deviations. So these are the deviations or differences. We squared all of them and took their average. Okay, so uh, you know, we got 16 and 16 plus 1 plus 1, so uh, 34 divided by 4 is 8.5. The square root of 8.5 means our standard deviation is 2.92. So that is how that's computed in statistics. 61B is something else for statistics uh, known as normal distribution or a bell curve. And the idea behind a bell curve um, is that the frequency distribution used for some data that has most probability close to the mean. So the highest point of that curve, that's the mean or average. It's kind of like a median in this case in that 50% of the data will go to the left, 50% of the data or distribution will go to the right for 100% total. So it works kind of like a, a median in that sense, but for a norm, it's a normal distribution, normally you would expect that, but um, that isn't always the case. Sometimes the mean you know, isn't, doesn't work like a median, but it will in a normal distribution. The further you are from the mean, the less something occurs. If this is the average, if you're really far away, there's only a little bit of room under that curve representing that not much happens over there, obviously. Okay, that's why this is the average. The further you go away, the less something will happen. So this is a true kind of normal distribution. The mean is here in the middle. 
within one standard deviation, whatever that happens to be in that previous problem, it was 2.92, but within one standard deviation between there and there, 68% of your data will fit between right there and right there. So 34%, 34%, 68% underneath your curve right there. 95% within two standard deviations of the mean, meaning between there and there. Again, whatever the standard deviation happens to be, it's unique to each problem. But in a normal distribution, 95% of the data will fit somewhere between two standard deviations away from the center or the mean. And then three standard deviations away. So again, we're getting real far away now. Well, 99.7. So again, the further you are away, outside of three standard deviations away, not much should occur. And then this is saying only 0.3% uh, will ever occur outside of that. So when studying data, most of it should be centered close to the mean. And then the further you go away, everything should fit in there. Anything outside, we call an outlier or it just doesn't fit. You know, it's not going to occur frequently. So an example, this is on page 400 of your book. Um, again, it, it, the, the, in, the, in the book, if you look at it, it says it appears to be a normal curve. It tells us the mean is 100 and the standard deviation is 5. And then it says how is the data distributed. Okay, so from the previous question, we said that one standard deviation below and above. So here's our mean, 5 above and 5 below. 68% of the data should fit between 95 and 105. Then we said 95% will fit between two uh, standard deviations away. So if 5 is one standard deviation, then two standard deviations will be 10 away. So 10 away from 100 is either 90 or 110. 95% of your data should fit between 90 and 110. And then 15 for three standard deviations, 5 times 3. Uh, 85 to 115, almost all your data should fit 99.7%. And that's really all that we're going to do right now with the normal distribution is talk about how much of the data fits. Uh, this all goes to box and whisker plots. Uh, stem and leaf is just a way to organize numbers. You should read over this section and look at that. It's just a way of organizing it. Box and whisker then um, organizes data based in um, medians of data. So when we're taking the medians of each remaining half of the data, so we list out all of our numbers in the data from least to greatest, we pick the median, that cuts it in half, then we take another median of the first half and another median of the second half. So it creates four groups. The, um, in the middle you have your median, then you have two other medians, so there's four groups of data each 25% of the original, we call those quartiles. So an example of what I'm talking about is if this is our data and we list it out, there's eight numbers, which means the median will be in the middle. To find the median, you take halfway between 33 and 35, which is 34. Then what, what has happened here, we, we split our data into two parts, four over here to the left of the median and four to the right. What uh, we do with box and whisker plots is we take the median of the left half, which would be halfway between 22 and 28, so 25, and we take the median of the upper half, so halfway between 40 and 50, which is 45, and so we take three medians. The entire data, then it splits in half. This is the lower half, this is the upper half. This problem in the book gave us an average or mean of 43. You can check that yourself, just add and divide by eight. And the standard deviation happens to be very high in this one because this is way higher than that, um, and this one being pretty low. So it's a, a very wide range of data here, not very consistent. And so a box and whisker plat, plot looks like this. Median and the two quartiles. These three numbers form a little box meaning that 25% of my data will fit between 25 and 34. That's these two numbers. 25% of my data will fit between 34 and 45. So those, those two numbers. 
25% between 16 and 25. So the last part of your box and whisker plot is always just your lowest number and your highest number. So two of my numbers fit higher than 45, two of them lower than our 25. And so that's how you make one of those. All right, that is all. See you Thursday.